In this video, I'll go over setting up Ubuntu Desktop on a Synology NAS as a virtual machine using Virtual Machine Manager. Once installed, I'll also set up OpenSSH to be able to connect to the Ubuntu VM through the command line, as well as set up remote desktop access to the VM to be able to connect to the Ubuntu VM's graphical interface. Before getting started, you'll want to make sure that your Synology NAS supports running Virtual Machine Manager. This website provides the current list of Synology NAS models that are supported, and I'll link to this website in the description below for your reference. Once you've confirmed that your Synology NAS supports Virtual Machine Manager, you want to install the package by bringing up the Package Center, then search for and install Virtual Machine Manager. After the install is completed, you'll want to open Virtual Machine Manager, which I'll do from the main menu, and run through the Virtual Machine Manager setup wizard, which determines if your Synology NAS is suitable to run virtual machines and allows you to select the volume that virtual machines will be installed on. Next, you'll need to download the Ubuntu Desktop ISO by going to the ubuntu.com website, select Download, then under the Ubuntu Desktop section, select the 2204 LTS button to start the download process. Once downloaded, switch back to DSM to upload the Ubuntu ISO to your Synology NAS. I'll do that here by bringing up FileStation, switch to my home directory, then upload the ISO. Now that everything is in place, let's start setting things up. I'll bring up Virtual Machine Manager, select Virtual Machine, then click Create to bring up this Create Virtual Machine window, where I'll choose Linux as the operating system, then continue with the setup. My setup only has one storage option, so I'll click Next on this window. From this Configure General Specifications window, I'll enter in a name for the Ubuntu Virtual Machine and allocate two CPU cores and four gigabytes of memory which are the recommended system requirements, then click Next. For storage, I'll allocate a 25 gigabyte virtual disk, then click Next once again. For network, I'll leave it as is to connect to the default VM network, then click Next to continue. On this other settings window, I'll browse and select the Ubuntu ISO that was uploaded earlier for the ISO file for boot up and switch auto start to last state, then click Next. I'll assign power management permissions to the DS admin account, then click Next once again. Finally, on this summary window, I'll click Done to complete the setup. Now I'll power on the Ubuntu VM, then click on the Connect button to bring up this web based console where I'll be able to run through the installation. To continue, I'll hit Enter with the Try or Install Ubuntu option selected. Next, I'll come up to this window where I'll select Install Ubuntu. I'll leave the keyboard layout as English US for my setup, but make sure to select the one that is appropriate for your environment, then click Continue. On this Updates and Other Settings window, I'll select the Minimal Installation option to install a web browser and basic utilities. Leave everything else as is, then click Continue. For installation type, I won't change anything, so I'll click on Install Now. I'll then click Continue on this pop-up window confirming the changes that will be made to the disk. I'll click Continue on this Where Are You window confirming my location, and fill in my name, computer name, and username and password on this Who Are You window, then click Continue. Now the installation will start up, and I'll pause the recording until the installation is done. The installation process took around about 45 minutes in my setup, and I'm now at this installation complete window where I'll click on Restart Now. After 5 minutes or so, I realized that the reboot didn't seem to work, so I brought up Virtual Machine Manager and did a forced shutdown. Then I selected Power On, and this time the VM started up successfully. I'll then click on the Connect button to bring up the web based console, and once the startup process is completed, 
I'll be able to log on to the graphical interface and click through these initial setup windows. I'll also install the updated software that is available for Ubuntu from this window and wait for the installation of the updated software to complete. When done, we'll be at this window that says that the computer needs to be restarted to finish installing the updates, so I'll click on Restart Now. After the VM finishes rebooting, I'll log in again, and the next thing I'd like to do is install the QEMU guest agent by bringing up a terminal session and run this command listed here on screen. Then I'll start up the QEMU guest agent by running this systemctl command. With the QEMU guest agent enabled, we should be able to shut down and restart the virtual machine from within Virtual Machine Manager without needing to use the Force Shutdown option. Virtual Machine Manager will also be able to detect the IP address of the Ubuntu VM as well. The next service I'd like to set up is OpenSSH, so I can SSH into the Ubuntu VM when I don't need a graphical interface. To do this, I'll run sudo apt install y openssh server and wait for the installation to complete. Once completed, I'll confirm that the service is running and enabled by issuing this systemctl command here. We can see that the SSH service is running and enabled, which makes sure that the service starts up automatically on boot. Now I'll confirm the IP address of the Ubuntu VM from Virtual Machine Manager. Then I'll bring up a terminal session on my MacBook and SSH into the Ubuntu VM using the account that I created during the installation, and I'm able to connect just fine. The next service I'll set up is XRDP, which allows for RDP or Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol connections to the Ubuntu VM. This allows us to connect to the Ubuntu VM's graphical interface without needing to rely on Virtual Machine Manager's connect option, which we've been using. To do this, I'll use the SSH terminal session I have open and issue the sudo apt install y xrdp command. I'll then run this systemctl command to make sure that the xrdp service is running and enabled, which it looks like it is. Now I'll bring up the web-based console connection to the Ubuntu VM, log in, then log out of the session. I found that if you don't log out of the web-based console, you'll get a black screen when connecting to the Ubuntu VM through RDP. Now I'll bring up the remote desktop application I use on my MacBook, add a new PC, then enter in the IP address of the Ubuntu VM in the PC name box, and I'll add a friendly name so I can easily identify the RDP PC as well, then click Add. I'll double click on the newly created PC, then click Connect on this warning pop-up window. Here, I'll enter in my username and password for the Ubuntu VM, then click Continue. I'll then enter in my password once again on this window, and now I'm connected to the Ubuntu VM's graphical interface through RDP. At this point, I'm able to use graphical applications like Firefox and install other applications from the Snap Store that I'd like to use. Running an Ubuntu VM on your Synology NAS is a great way to learn more about Linux and opens access to applications and services that aren't readily available on a Synology NAS. And if you have any service or application that you are interested in running on Ubuntu, leave a comment in the description below. In the meantime, make sure to check out some of my other videos listed here on screen. And if you'd like to support my work, check out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.